It's now 538 here on your Wednesday morning. Once again, you know, we're seeing that cone is continuing yep. to shift more and more east, but that does not mean that we need to let our guard down. As Alex was talking about earlier, this storm is continuing to get stronger and larger, so that means its impacts are going to be felt among, you know, more of an area. Exactly. Yep. Still need to be prepared for whatever we do get. And that's the key. The storm is getting larger mm -hmm. even as it begins to weaken as it goes from category four status down to a tropical storm. The energy spreads out and that makes the wind field larger. And that's why we are still looking at the possibility of some significant impacts here in central Georgia. But this is the satellite and radar this morning down towards Florida. You can clearly see the center of the storm right there. There is the eye wall. It is moving towards the north landfall expected somewhere between Fort Myers and Port Charlotte. Here here in central Georgia this morning, any cloud cover you see that is the far northern extent of Hurricane Ian. We do have temperatures in the 50s, some 40s up towards the north, 55 here in Forsyth, 56 in Macon, 51 in Warner Robins. It's a nice morning out there. That's not a secret. 140 mile an hour winds down towards the south. Again, as this moves towards the coast, expected to make a landfall there. The hurricane uh, warnings there from Tampa down to Naples over towards Orlando in a hurricane warning right now. Tropical storm warnings elsewhere along the Florida Peninsula up along the Georgia coast. Coast. More tropical storm warnings, also storm surge warnings, expecting three to six feet of storm surge here along the Florida coast in a few spots, and then more tropical storm warnings as you head up towards Charleston this morning. Here is the cone as of the 5 a.m. update. Notice a category four hurricane weakening down to a tropical storm rolling off the coast somewhere right around Daytona Beach. But then as we get into the Atlantic here, potentially maybe gaining some steam back up as it moves over the warm water before moving north into the Carolinas there as we get into the latter part of the week. Weekend. So here's what this means for us. Well, first the models. Let me show you this fairly good agreement right there in the center of the cone. So a better idea of what's going on this morning than we've had the past several mornings. Now the GFS showing rain beginning in our far southern counties. This is Friday here at 6 a.m beginning to pull it towards the north Friday at 5 p.m. It's entirely possible, say if you're in Taylor, Macon, Dooley, Crisp counties, that you don't see rain on Friday until very later in the day. The storm passes towards the north here. Here's Saturday at 7 a.m. Some rain still in and around central Georgia. That pulls away. We begin to clear out Saturday night. Here's how this shapes up on the European model. This is Friday at 2 a.m. Beginning rain there in our far eastern counties. Begins to pull in by the time we get to 2 p.m. here on Friday. Heavier stuff down along the coast, of course. The storm coming inland, pulling towards the north again if you're in Taylor Macon Dooley Crisp not as much of an impact as if you are in Hancock Washington Johnson Trutland that's just going to be how things go with the storm pulls away Saturday evening here we are at 11 p.m. beginning to dry out here in central Georgia but I do think our biggest threat is going to be this the wind here we are tomorrow at about 2 p.m. these purples and pinks you see here these are 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts those will begin to pull in here we go into the evening hours there's Friday at about 8 p.m. a 43 mile an hour wind gust potentially here in Macon and notice we're here in the red you get out towards the west much stronger wind gusts especially as you get down towards the coast as well there's the center of the storm coming in as that pulls towards the north our winds begin to die down here's how this shapes up on the European model the center of the storm down near uh, Cape Canaveral down near Daytona pulling towards the north now here we go with 20 to 30 40 potentially mile an hour winds here in central Georgia this is Friday at 9 p.m. And then as we roll into the weekend, the winds begin to die down. But because we have that high pressure to the north of us, that's going to create that gradient. And that means we're going to have a strong pressure gradient around and that creates strong winds. Again, on the edge of the rainfall, higher amounts to the east. That was the GF or that was the Euro. Here's the GFS slightly less here in Macon. But again, it's just a matter of a few miles. The, the rain gradient is going to be very tight as well. What you need to know is this wind biggest threat went gusts to 45, maybe even higher in a few spots Thursday and Friday. Rain were forecasted to be on the edge, so I'm not too concerned about flash flooding. What is concerning to me is the possible power outages because of how long the wind is going to last and the wet soil we have around. Meanwhile, today here in central Georgia, a fairly nice day. Temperatures into the 70s, mid to low 70s at that before all is said and done. A high temperature of about, I went 76 today, partly cloudy skies. Wind begins tomorrow, the potential for rain and wind on Friday. Again, we're going to be on the edge of the rain once we get into the weekend, begin to dry things out here in central Georgia. Turning nice next week. How about mid 70s with low humidity?